whatever the team needs, I'm here to do it. I don't care how many points I score. I'm here to hoop, and I'm here to help the team win. That's UConn culture. We'll tell you who that was. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A little housekeeping, my YouTube support, amazing. I'd love to have all of those subscribers also download any version of the audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts. So it's equally as important to help that Locked On UConn audience grow. So if you can do me two quick favors, click that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, then head over to Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts, and hit that follow button. This way, you'll never miss a moment of Locked On UConn. Can't tell you how much this support means to me. It's everything. Drop us a five-star review. Good reviews trigger referrals for similar shows where we could get some new audience members who are interested in UConn content. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. With playoffs over and the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer, FanDuel is looking is hooking all of us customers up with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Well, let's go back to the future, shall we? A lefty combo guard out of Sharpsburg, Maryland, announced his commitment to, to the Huskies on Friday afternoon. He's the third commit lined up for the class of 2023 in the second in the last week. Yes, we're talking about solo ball, already in the running for the best name in college sports. He chose UConn over DePaul, USC, Miami, and a, in a Rhode Island school named Providence. He's a 69th ranked player in the 24-7 composite top 150 and the third ranked player out of Maryland. Ball played out of Brewster Academy in New Hampshire, the same school that produced fellow Husky Jalen Adams. Also, his new his teammate, Jaden Ross, on Team Mellow, Carmelo Anthony's grassroots programs in Baltimore. Ball's performance in Nike EYBL, the Indianapolis session, sent his stock skyrocketing to the start of the summer after averaging set almost 18 points, five and a half rebounds, and just under two assists and one steal, all while shooting almost 60% from the field. So, it's easy to understand when Solo Ball was recruited why Dan Hurley and his staff was very high on him. You heard the quote earlier about how he does not care about scoring. He doesn't care about stats. He's just here to hoop. But, before I wax poetic on Solo, let's talk about what he actually provides. He provides physicality. My guy is six foot four. He's built like an Adonis. He's a rock. I mean, I don't think you're moving him off his spot and from a defensive side of the ball. He doesn't get overwhelmed by physical play. Um, he has incredible big game potential. Think about the games that he got big time minutes off the bench, nonetheless. Nine points off the bench against Indiana, seven points off the bench against Texas. Both games played 26 and 29 minutes, respectively. His best game against another fellow one seed in last year's tournament, North Carolina, was I was on a business trip. And I'll tell you a quick story. I was at a, at a dinner, um, and the game was peripherally, peripherally to my right. And I spent most of the, most of the, uh, <laughs> the dinner like this. Oh, yeah. That's that sounds great. Um, just really shows you how dedicated I am to my job. Um, no, I mean, I, we had a good time, but I was very, very much involved, at least as much as I could be uh, in, in UConn's beating Carolina. And I remember that game in particular because Solo hit some big threes. He had 13 points. He was 15, 50 percent from three that game. I think he was three for six from the three point land. Um that's the kind of offense that they were expecting from him. And just like Dan has said in his media availability and countless interviews, this, this team last year, the 37 and three national champion back to back winners, was so good, was so efficient offensively, defensively. Where were the minutes going to come for guys like Solo Ball? 
even a guy like Jalen Storr, who's already in the conversation for the NBA draft for next year. So we're talking guys who could play in the league who are not getting run. And if you've watched any of the summer league, you know why. Because our guys, Cam Spencer, Steph Castle, these guys are taking over games at that level. And no disrespect to Solo, he wasn't ready to take over that that mantle. And I think he is now. Um, you know, I went back in the archives September 5th of last year uh, for, for his media availability. So we're talking almost a year ago to to uh, as we're getting closer to the end of the summer. And um, I think my favorite quote, recruiting quote from uh, uh, one of the websites was Solo still plays like a five foot five guard, which he was till his sophomore year in high school. He's bred for toughness. Both of his parents are Baltimore City, Maryland products. He even said that in a, in in, a, in that uh, media availability that you know his parents were tough on him, in particular his father, when it comes to um, driving him and making sure that he's always always doing what he's supposed to be doing in terms of the basketball. And and you know I think he said something like if he doesn't make it in the league or the, or in basketball, his dream job is to be an agent. You can just tell me. Listen, he's a he's a great kid. He is incredibly intelligent, but also. Um, uh, seems like an incredible presence around his his teammates. He is by far what UConn culture is all about, and I am so excited for this kid. This six foot four, I think he has a six foot ten wingspan. Um, like that's freakish in a in a good way, and I don't think we're going to have any issues with scoring, with defense, with efficiency in terms of who gets points who gets the ability to put the ball in the hole if you've watched some of the uh, highlights that they're starting to put out of Ada Mahaney of Liam McNeely we're going to have no shortage of guys who can put the ball on the ground but also drive it to the hole and also shoot the three so solo is going to be a big part of that and I'm looking forward to his breakout sophomore season and I'm just itching man it's day by day we do another show and then we get a day closer to UConn basketball and uh, I just I just can't wait well before we go um, wanted to talk about the next segment um, let's talk legacy right should blue bloods follow the UConn way and hire outside of the family that's coming up after this Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle leveled up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP. Bring home big wins, huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. You're back on Locked on Yukon. Um, the impetus of this conversation around what Yukon and Blue Blood should do after someone leaves a program, either goes to the NBA, retires like Coach K and Roy Williams did at Duke and Carolina. I started to, I listened to a uh, podcast with Jim Rome. I don't think it was a podcast. I think it was on his radio show, but I probably listened to it after. So technically it was a podcast, right? So you could hear D Dan talking about his journey. It almost sounded, and I know this isn't his intention. He was pointing out that in today's society, we take shortcuts. He didn't say that, but he did say that he took a more traditional route. The way it was was done like the way it was usually done right how you were an assistant coach then you got a head coaching gig at a, at a he got a high school job then he went to a low level uh mid-major wagner then he went to kind of a mid-major in rhode island now he's at uconn and is at the top of his profession so the steps that he took um that's what prompted me to talk about this today briefly because there is a there isn't a more compelling use case for hiring internally the pros and cons 
versus going outside of the family than UConn with Kevin Ollie and Dan Hurley, right? Um, I don't think Dan Hurley would have been ready for the UConn job when Kevin Ollie took it over. But conversely, Kevin Ollie wasn't ready for this job. And it's that's the beautiful thing for UConn fans is even with KO's, you know, faults, which were many, we still won a title in his second year. And he and you can't take that away from him. He is a national championship winning coach, which is such an outlier. It's amazing. And it says more about UConn and its, you know, commitment to to excellence and the ability to get themselves in a great position in, in March and April. And it's just it's fascinating. So I had a rare, respectful conversation with some Duke fans last night on Twitter about John Shire. Uh, and the reason why I brought this up is I also heard him in a podcast talking about um tampering and you know it it almost made him sound and i'm not saying this to even be disrespectful to john shire he sounded naive um you know i think when dan hurley talks about tampering he knows tampering is going on he doesn't like it he doesn't like that tampering is going on but you can't you can't help it but he also talked about how when he started talking to transfers that they already had visits lined up and that they already, you know, were were squared away on offers. It's like, yeah, yeah, John, this is what happens in college basketball. And I and I know that you're still going into your third season, but you should probably have someone to prepare you for that. And I don't think when you hire someone that has not been the head of the snake, you know, you're not you're the there's a difference between being the general and being a soldier. And he was a great soldier. He was on Coach K's staff. He was a national championship winning player. He wasn't the best player on that team. I heard someone use that as an as an example. He was a good player. He was a very good player at, at Duke. And they won a national championship when he was a player. But he also hasn't led anything from a coaching perspective until he f- took over one of the most storied programs in, in, in college basketball in Duke. And it was handed to him on a silver platter. Like there's no there's no caveats like, oh, well, he worked for for um, for for Coach K for, you know, how many years, 10 years, whatever it is. It, it probably wasn't that long, but there were guys on the staff. I mean, Jeff Capels had head coaching experience. Um, we can go down the list. Chris Carroll has been there longer than him. Why didn't he get the, the position? So it's a very interesting dynamic. And it, I'm not saying this because um, crapping all over John Shire, although it's fun to do that because we don't like Duke, but it's also an interesting juxtaposition because I said the same thing about Hubert Davis because of the Kevin Ollie situation. I think UConn fans are in a unique position to say, Hey, you know, we want a title with our, with our handpicked successor of our uh, hall of fame goaded coach and Jim Calhoun, but it didn't work out in the long run. And now because we went through the process of getting someone that we felt very comfortable with to bring in, it's, it's curious if there will ever be the scenario like um, Kentucky stayed in the family with Mark Pope. He was a former player, but guess what? Mark Pope had head coaching experience, and they also tried to get about seven other guys before they got him. So what I'm trying to say is I think Dan really appreciates his journey, and it's what makes him a better coach today and fully capable of navigating transfer portal, of navigating recruiting um, pitfalls where kids are just in it for NIL and he kind of weeds all that out. Whereas I feel like we've, we've seen this with John Shire of Duke and the Kentuckys and the, now eventually the Arkansas with, with coach Cal, there's less of a strategic approach. And I'm happy about that because the more I hear about this Duke team with Cooper flag and everything that goes with it, goes with it, they're going to be good, but are they going to be good enough to beat a team that has the continuity that UConn has? Even I hate to say it, even like a Kansas team who brought in a bunch of transfers, but kept kept Hunter Dickinson, um, you know, kept the the core nucleus of that team. So I don't I don't see it, but I could be wrong. They could be the anomaly, and they could have an anomaly season like like UConn had with Kevin Ollie. It's definitely possible. Same thing with Carolina. If they continue to, I think Carolina has been more adept to bringing transfers in. Um, and and I heard a Duke fan say, well. You know, the acceptance rate for transfers is like 6%. Listen, guys, I don't want to hear that crap when it comes to uh, you know who you got in. Notre Dame fans do that all the time in football. If you can't compete, you can't compete, and that's tough. But don't use it as a crutch. You either figure out a way to get transfers in 
and work with your administration and, and get that done. But don't use it as a crutch. That's silliness and it's it's a joke. But I just I think it's an, an interesting conversation. I'm curious what the comments will be about uh, on this episode if people hear this this segment. And um, I think the best way, in my opinion, is to go outside of the family because if you if we're being honest, if you have rose colored glasses on about a program, whether it's Kentucky, whether it's UConn, Kansas, Duke, Carolina, Indiana. Um, you don't want to have a guy that's a yes man. It's like, hey, I'll just do whatever because I'm the head coach at Duke. You want someone to come in and say, this is crap and we need to fix it. And that's what Dan Hurley did. He said, we need to get back to recruiting at a higher level, you know, really kind of focus in on, um, on guys who are, you know, the type of players that UConn used to get. And he built it up over the course of, you know, six, seven years. So now we're sitting here looking at a potential three-peat and I really hope people don't copy us, but they probably will. We're going to talk about the TBT uh, after we had Mark D'Amelio on yesterday. I really want to kind of hammer home how much fun that's going to be for UConn fans to watch some older uh, generation, generational teams and players from different generations playing together on the on the basketball tournament coming up next week. Coming up after this. Did you know that the same things that fuel the best athletes in the world can still help the rest of us? Just ask Cam Spencer, who does every little thing he can to dial in his wellness, reduce inflammation in his body, and make sure that he's eating foods that fuel him. And he does that with the help of one of Connecticut's best wellness brands. Here's what he has to say about it. I chose to partner with the Feel Good Lab because I wanted to elevate my performance, improve my health, and become more educated on nutrition. Since we started working together, all of these goals have been reached. Now I'm continuing to find new ways to get better with the Feel Good Lab team, and I are very proud and grateful for our partnership. In fact, that's exactly why I, Mark Sinetto, host of Locked on UConn, wanted to partner with Ryan in the Feel Good Lab. Plant-based pain relief recovery tools, the highest quality supplements, an at-home diagnostic test that measures what foods in my body actually trigger inflammation. Plus, they are an official partner of UConn basketball. I'm on week five of my wellness journey, and so far I feel like I'm in my 20s again. So check out and feel check out the Feel Good Lab on their website. Use code Cam Spencer for twelve percent off your order. Ten percent and a ten percent donation of that goes to Bleeding Blue for Good. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, and we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to, FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app, dream up bets, and any time I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com, start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Okay, let's talk... TBT stars of stores. Let's do a quick segment on that. And then we'll close out the Friday of July 12th here. Um, if you guys have not watched a TBT event, you have to watch out for a couple different things. But before we get there, the TBT itself is this team is all basically all UConn players. So some most notably Jeff Adrian, Ryan Boatwright, Rodney Purvis, Joby Calcaterra, Atur Majuk. Jerome Dyson, DeAndre Daniels, and RJ Cole, and maybe more. It's, we have until July 15th to get guys like Rudy Gay and others that could potentially be on the show, on, 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 the, uh, on, the, uh, on the team. I'd love to have them on the show. We'll see what happens. Um, but what's so cool about the TBT is it's like an organized uh, AAU tournament for older players. And I don't mean that because, you know, because some of these guys are young. Like Joey Calcutta is probably, what, 24? Uh, Rodney Purvis is probably in his 30s. Jerome Dyson, Ryan Boatwright, these guys. And you heard Mark D'Amelio say yesterday, you have to be in basketball shape. They don't want guys going over here and keeling over. Um, I think Tyler Olander is one of the coaches. Shout out to Tyler. Um, he made the smart choice of not playing because <laughs> he is not in basketball shape. And there's no shame in that. I am definitely not in basketball shape uh, anymore. So uh, it takes a special person to really kind of be in basketball shape past your playing days. So um, that's the interesting part for that. I think what's what's also interesting is some. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but don't be surprised if 
if UConn loses in this tournament to a inferior opponent. And what I mean by that is some of these teams just play together for a very long period of time. And they just it's it's kind of like it's kind of like when a a younger team comes in against a, a, a group of established veterans in the NCAA tournament and you get an upset and you're like, how did you know St. Peter's beat Kentucky? And it's because none of those guys really play to well together because it's a collection of talent. And unfortunately, that's what this tournament sometimes is with the alumni teams. Um, I hope that there's enough time for Chris Smith and company to formulate a cohesive offense and defensive, um, you know, uh, presence in terms of, you know, down low physicality, all that. The first team they're playing is like a collection of all D2 and, and D3 players like SUNY college and all these other areas. And I have no idea if this team is even halfway decent. So just preparing everybody for the worst. I hope they, I hope they win. I hope they get to, I'll be rooting like heck um to make sure that they do but uh it's on fox uh but locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube it's now also available on the amazon fire tv and the free fire tv channels app lockdown sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with all the experts of lockdown plus your national shows covering every league find lockdown sports today now available on the free fire tv channels app before we go i wanted to talk to you guys about the elam ending the Elam ending, if you're not familiar with it, I'll just pull it up really quick. Um, it allows every team to kind of stay in the game the natural way of whatever. It's like it's it's a more natural way to end the game. So instead of like fouling at the end of the game to see if you can get more possessions, there's a target score. So, for example, if the score is 80 to 72, the target score becomes 88. The first team to reach 88 wins. Once the game clock is eliminated, trailing teams are allowed to focus on getting stops rather than preventing the clock from running out. So at that point, the clock doesn't matter. The result is great defense and, to their point, pure basketball possessions all the way through the end. Um, they, they use this in the All-Star game. They've used this uh, in different tournaments. And the question is, is the Elam ending a better way to end basketball? I think it is, but I also think it also takes away from closing out a game uh, in the respect of the way it's always been played. If you want to talk about progression and, and maybe the evolution of the game, I could see why that matters. But it's an untimed format, and it allows each team to end the game on a basket. Um, if you go to the Elam ending, if you go to uh, the tournament.com slash TBT slash Elam ending, you can see some clips of um, the All-Star game, LeBron hitting a game winner uh, in the All-Star game. You can also see previous Elam ending winners and it does make the game exciting. It also makes the game exciting for broadcasters because you get to call a game ending three or a, the only thing that sucks is if it ends on like a free throw. So like we talk about like the exciting finishes and you can see some of these videos if you go to the website. But if the game ends on a foul um, and, it, you know, it's target score is 97 and they and they hit a free throw to win it, that's super anticlimactic. So um, there's that too. But anyway... Just wanted to get you guys in on that. This has been another episode of Locked On UConn. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, asking you to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, go Huskies. Have a great weekend, everybody.